Oh, she'll sleep for a couple of hours. Is she all right, Doc? It's nothing serious. As soon as she wakes up, you come get me. You don't look too well, dear. I think I got some pills that'll help you. Take a couple of those every two hours, you'll sleep like a baby. <laughs> Someone has to take care of it. But it doesn't have to be you. Today is the first day that I'm your husband and you're my wife. Um, How do you know? Well, I hope you gave her something to make her sleep. The minute she wakes up, she moves to somebody else's house. I'll run up the stairs. Then I'll pick you some dinner. You hungry, dear? Yes. Yeah. I'm very happy. Who can eat? <laughs> Doc Opie said to let him know the minute he woke up. <laughs> well, who are you? Me. Where am I? In my heart. Would you like something to eat? No, thank you. I'm going to get back with you and I'll be right back. If you need anything, you just call me out. You tell Doc he's got to stay someplace else. Something gave you pretty bad eating. No, I'm eating. I'm by a horse. You're not very friendly today. You don't like me, do you? You've got to know me. I think you'd like me. Well, when Doc gets here, you're leaving when he leaves. So where will I go? I don't know. A rich woman like you must have some fine house someplace. Where do you live? <laughs> if you think I'm rich, dear. My wife says your clothes are very expensive. You are the right. I know why you want me out of your house. Good. Then I don't have to explain it to you. Why, you are afraid of me. What makes you think I'm afraid of you? Don't you know? No.
Hi, Jack. How long has it been since you've eaten? I'm Doctor. Oh, with a little food and some rest, you'll get your strength back in no time. Stay here. Oh, stop. You can stay here as long as you want to, you know. You see? You're among friends. All you've got to do is concentrate on getting well. Lily, get this young lady some food. And uh, take Pierre and Jock with you. I want to be alone with my face. Why don't you stay and have supper with me? Oh, you don't want company in your wedding night, Lily? One more isn't going to make any Is anyone else feeling all better? She is? Then why is she still staying at Lily's and Fair? Well, if she was staying at your house, would you send her away? No, but my wife would. <laughs> been acting like a servant ever since the night came here. Really, she's a very bad woman. Yeah, how can you say that? Because it's the truth. How do you know? But she tells us nothing about herself. We, we don't know where she comes from, where she lives. We don't even know her last name. But she's rich. Why would you want to live in a place like the pit? Why? Huh, Lily? Good morning, Lily. Good morning, Lily. Yeah. Lily, how in very kind of you letting me wear your clothes? Sure, baby. Not as nice as the ones you're used to wearing. I'll fix you breakfast. Thank you, Lily. You must have a last name. What is it? Lily. Why do you stay here? I found a pit. Very empty. You must have lived someplace before Jacques found you and brought you. Where was it? All right, don't ask me. But I'll tell you one thing. Today's the last day you stay in my house. Good morning, Jack. Good morning, Lynette. Good morning, Jack. This is the first time you've come to see me. I didn't come to see you. I came to go for here. Oh? He's inside. I know. I'll talk to him later. He's up. What is it, Minette? Something wrong? Yes. Oh, Jack, I don't know what to do. Lily's been so good to me. I'd, I'd never do anything to hurt her, but I like Lily very much, Jack. You seem to like Pierre very much, too. Or you wouldn't... I hate you. I know you are, brother. This is not a nice thing to say to you, but... I hate Pierre. If you hate Pierre so much, why do you stay in his house? I'll tell you. But not here. Give me a word and I'll tell Lily. Well, the first time that I stayed at Pierre and Lily's house, the doctor gave me something to make me crazy. I don't know how long I slept, but when I woke, 
Yes, I've loved you. Thank you, Lady. Oh, I know what you say is true. I'm not mistaken. Just before I came into the house that night with Lily and Doc, I passed by the bedroom window. I saw you and Pierre in each other's arms. You didn't seem to mind Pierre making love to you. I hated it, but I was so weak I couldn't stop him. I tried, but it... I understand why you're so cold with me. I'm sorry, Minette. I thought... I know what you thought. Then who do you think I am? Oh, please don't cry, Minette. I'm a fool, a stupid fool. You know, the first time I saw you, I thought that you were the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. I've never seen you, Minette. Will you forgive me? I didn't want to see it to end, really, but the that if I left, he'd tell everybody he was going to accuse me of horrible things, Doc. Don't you worry about fear. He'll accuse you of nothing. I'll keep you back. Thank you, Doc. Doc, I'm so alone. You don't know what a terrible feeling it is not to have anyone in the world tell what happened to you. I feel me now. You care. Mm -hmm. Why, you don't even know me. I've got to find some place to stay. Don't you think you should go home? I have no home to go to. But you must live someplace. Where? If I only... Please don't ask me any more questions, Jack. All right. You could stay here if you wanted. Oh, I could do that. I'd be more tough. They'll have nothing to talk about. You stay here and I'll move in the cup. You said time, Jack. Jack! 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 The car is your feet. Oh. <laughs> that, I've forgotten all about that. Minette, if somebody stole your ring, it must have been old Carrie. Old Carrie? The old Greek Greek woman who found you unconscious in the Royal Road. I thought he found you. No, no, Carrie found you first, then came and got covered in you. We are going back to La Force Country, Minette. I'll stop in on old Carrie. She's got your ring. I'll get him back. You know, all the green, green at How can I ever repay you for all you've done? Oh, nothing else. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Goodbye, Jack. Mind if I bunk at your place for a while? 
All right, sure, Jack. You can stay with me as long as you like. Stop. Today we work real hard. Now that I'm a married man, I gotta make lots of money. Oh, Josh. It looks like they'd like to kill me. Time will make everything all right, Pierre. I hope so. I love him like a brother. <laughs> What's she doing in Jacques' house? Lynette is going to stay there. Are you jealous, Pierre? Are you crazy? She's a bad woman. Shouldn't be staying in Jacques' house. And she may be bad for you because you have a wife, but she isn't bad for Jacques. Maybe she'll make him forget that he's in love with Lily. All right, Jacques. Hold! You don't mind survival with you, Jack. Now, Minette, you're welcome. doesn't love you. I almost wish she loved you instead of me. I know how much you love Lily. What do you say like that? Never mind, dear. I don't want to talk to you. Well, you're going to. I've got some things to tell you. So, I mean, that's going to be staying at your place, huh? Well, now, you listen to me. You better shut up, dear. I'm not going to shut up until you hear what I have to say. If you don't like me, that, why do you let her stay on with you and Lily? I didn't want her to. But you wouldn't leave. I... Could have told Lily the very first night what she was. Telling your wife that she tried to make love to another woman on your wedding night? It wouldn't be nice, would it, dear? Is that what she told you? She didn't have to tell me. I told you myself. I gotta tell you. She forced her love on me. God, she's a trap. A nymphomaniac. <laughs> Listen to me. Let me tell you what happened. No, Doc. No, 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 no. to 
Come back and pay old Callie a visit. I was told that you were the one who found me. That's right. If I hadn't found you, you might have died. Well, thank you, girl. Well, that's very sweet of you, dearie. Not many people think so kindly of poor old Callie. Well, I'm just going to sit down and have some soup. Won't you join me? No, thank you, Callie. I can only stay a minute. Oh, you can stay longer if you want. Have a lot to talk about, dearie, don't you? <laughs> oh, you gave me such a fright, I dropped the dipper into the soup. Oh, I have. I didn't come here to talk you, darling. I came here to get these. You stole them from me, and I want them back. I'll give them back to you, dearie. Beautiful rings weren't made for these gnarled fingers of mine. They were made for beautiful hands like yours. But before I give them that, I want to know what you're going to give me. I'm not going to give you anything. These rings are very expensive. Sure, you're going to give old Callie a reward for finding them. You get found them? You stole them from me. Now take them off and give them back. I won't take them off until I know how much you're going to give me. I'm old and very poor. <laughs> you never get them off that way, dear. I haven't time to get them on myself. I have to use butter to squeeze them on. What are you going to do? Do you expect to get the dip out now? It will be much easier to use your hands. Oh, no, dear. He's going to have one of them. Stop. I'll get them back to you. Got a terrible fight. Here it hurts real bad. Well, now, I wonder what they were fighting about. What do men usually fight about? Two or three days before you can go back to work. 
Maybe that's just as well. Keep you and Jack apart. Give him time to cool off. Here comes Lily. How much gold is it, Doc? One dollar. Five dollars for taking care of Manette. Not me. I ain't responsible for her. I treated her in your house. Miss Linnell taught me enough already. If she owes you five bucks, you better get it from her. What happened? Nothing serious, Lily. Thanks, Doc. Uh, did you say Lanier? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, take care of him, Lily. Keep those two birds apart until this wing heals. Lanier. Lynette Lanier. Somehow that has a familiar ring. You know, if it wasn't for Todd, that fool Jacques would have killed me. Why do you hate the next thing? Never mind. You just stay away from her. Why? Because I'm your husband and I'll tell you to. Where are you going? Take these back in the neck. All right. You come right back here.
Stop being the next. I'm going to see her, and I'm going to talk to her anytime I want to. It's because you don't like it, no reason for me not to. I'm your husband, and you do what I tell you. She's a bad woman. You always say that, but you never tell me why you think she's bad. Well, you just take my word for it. It's what I say to you. Mm. I, I, I think she's done something wrong. That's why she's down here in the tent, where nobody can find her. And makes you think anybody's looking for her. Well, why else would she be staying here? Maybe he's staying here because he's in love with John. Well, you know, he's a fool enough to fall in love with her. And that doesn't love him. You can bet your life on that. Now, you stay away from her. And you know everything, don't you? No. But I know everything there is to know about women. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know how many girls I've turned out to ask me to marry. But when you propose, I accept it. You know why? No, what? I never asked you to marry me. You're the only girl I've asked to marry me. You know why? Because you love me. Because my Lily's the sweetest little girl in the whole world. You two ought to do that inside. Now, out here, we got an audience. <laughs> Hello, darling. I was trying to tell you that I was going to fix some coffee with you. Would you like some? Well, really, it didn't look to me much like you were thinking about making coffee. Oh. What's on your mind, Doc? And that Lanier. What about her? Well, you don't need a doctor to tell you your brother's in love with her. Josh said you found her up on a road in the Lafouche interior. You know, that's up near Green Hill. A lot of rich people live in Green Hill. So? Yeah, sometimes it pays to be a literate man. Here's a month-old copy of the New Orleans newspaper I subscribe to. I ain't interested. I think you'll be interested in this. What do you make of it? Well, the Minette Lanier, who's living over in Jock Hilesburg, sure didn't commit suicide. Obviously. Maybe she's a cousin or something. Maybe. Well, there's one way to find out. I'll take this paper up and show it to her. I'll show it to her. You stay here and have some coffee with Lily. around here. I'd certainly know him. Oh, 
What makes you think I can't do that? Well, we got down to you at more than 10 miles from there. So I figured out where you come from. Well, you said you're wrong, Jim. You don't come from Grand Hill. Where do you come from? Where I come from? None of your business. Those things must cost a lot of money, do they? Maybe no bigger than you. Maybe you stole Maybe you got them in the gun. I'm not a... Then I'm not a... You're a than a thief. Oh, Dad, you're me. Dad told me what he read in the newspaper. Did you tell me that about it? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. What'd you say? Nothing. Well, let's take me a little trip. I'll be back in a while. Where are you going? Strange Hill. Let me go with you, dear. Himself to death. I'd long drive him. Thank you. Who are you? I'm Pierre. Pierre Gio. And this is my wife, Lily. No way. Are you Clay Lanier? Yes, I'm Clay Lanier. Do you know my wife? No, I didn't. What are you doing here? I know a girl who has the same name as your wife, and I thought they might be related. My wife had no relation with that kind of girl. There's only one in that from here. There'll never be another. A wonderful woman. I think she was. And now that you know that neither myself, when my wife was related to your friend, there's no reason for you to remain here in war. I don't know why you're here. Curiosity. You want to know how my wife killed herself? No, I'll tell you. I know the truth. This girl. is it right here. This is the picture that she used to remove herself from this unhappy world. With this gun, she pressed it to a temple. Fire. Except my wife made sure that the chambers were in her. 
the human that was a much braver human being than us. That's all. I don't want strangers hoping that my wife said. So, go away! Listen, you gotta drink before you can walk like that. Just in there? Where do you live? Where's your home? That old Grigri -gri one. He comes home and sets this on a girl lying in the road in the woods, unconscious. Well, he, he went and there she was. I feel as could be. Well, he brought her home and she's in pretty bad shape. This woman. Was she wearing riding clothes? Yes, sir. Bird. Bird. Must be her. Oh, I'm sure it's not Mr. Mir. Well, there's one way to find out. I've got a picture that's really in the house. Get it. You must never find it. Please, sir. You must tell Mr. Mayor the picture he shows you is not the woman you know as Minute and Minute. Why? Because I don't want him to ever find it. If he does, I know something's going to happen. That is Nina Dupre. Someday I'll find that woman. When I do, I'll find her. Yeah. 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 Because Nina and I gave her no other choice. Did we? Did we, Bert? But, Mr. Lanier, I don't think Mr. and Mrs. Gill are interested in hearing about her. Oh, they're interested, sir. There we go. You know all about Nina Dupre? Tell him, Bert. Doctor said she wouldn't be able to walk for a long time. 
was on the county accident, Mr. Frey came to Grange Hill. Seeing Tom Mizzle and Eric couldn't move about none, doctor thought time would pass easier for her. She had a woman her own age to stay with her, to be a sort of companion to her. Instead, she turned out to be a companion for Mr. Lanier. The first time I saw the way she looked at Mr. Lanier, I knew there was going to be trouble. In the beginning, Mr. Lanier liked her a whole lot. She felt sorry for it. Have you ever done this kind of work before, Lee? No, ma'am. Mr. Lanier. We're going to spend a lot of time together, so why don't you call me Lynette? Thank you. Dr. Thomas told me you worked in the cotton mill. Did you like it? I'm sure I would, too. Hello, Dolly. Well, how are you two getting along? It's fine, Jerry. No uh, personality clash? None at all. Well, then it's all set. Oh, Anita, first drive me to the town. I'd probably like to go along with the pick up some clothes. All right, Mr. Lanier. Now, wait a minute, young lady. You must remember you're not a servant here, huh? Why, before you leave, you certainly can call me to say, right? I've got closet filled with clothes, and I won't be able to wear them for a long time. You're almost the exact size before. If you don't mind wearing my clothes, there's no need for you to go into town. That's a wonderful idea, honey. Find somebody that can use out of it. Come on. Uh, let's see. Not yet, huh? Well, like we've made for it. Oh, it's beautiful. And so are you. I've always said a beautiful girl must wear beautiful things. Isn't that right, Donna? Yes, sir. Nina, I hope you enjoy your stay to drink. I'm sure I will, Bye, Donna. In the beginning, Nina and Lisa and Mary were together all the time. They hit it off real well. They enjoyed each other's company. Evening, Nina would read to Mrs. Lanier, play cards and things like that. Sometime, Mr. Lanier would join them. And when he did, Nina would pay no more attention to him than she did to Mrs. Lanier. I always thought because she wore Mrs. Lanier's clothes, she actually thought she was mistress of Grange Hill. Mrs. Lanier suspected what Nina was up to, but I guess she didn't quite know what she could do about it. It wasn't long before Nina was spending most of her time with Mr. Lanier. We would meet every morning. Mr. Lanier would give a riding lesson. And to see them together, no one would ever think she was hired to be a companion to Mrs. Lanier. The way she threw herself at him was scandalous. Whenever he drove into town, Nina always seemed to figure out some reason for going along with him. And she always managed to get as close to him as possible. Miss Lanier watched them from the bedroom window. And she was very concerned with what she saw. Until it was too late, Mr. Lanier never seemed to be aware of what Nina was up to. He thought she was just being friendly because she was grateful to him for bringing her to Green Hill. Mrs. Lanier stood up as long as she could. And when she could stand it no longer, she decided something must be done about Nina. I said you won't see me, Nina. I do, Nina. Ray said I was willing to ride off the train with you. Nina, I won't be needing you any longer. What do you mean? I mean, I want you to leave Grange Hill, and I want you to leave tonight. Why do you want me to leave? I don't feel I owe you any explanation. Let us just say I made a mistake not treating you like a servant when you I'm not your servant. Anyone else? I never did as good as you are. I know you want me to I'm sure you do. But there's no need to continue this discussion. You think any of my things you like particularly. I mean, I'm getting rid of me that easy, you know. I'll lock it here and I'm going to stay. Clay loves me, so... Is anybody in the brain? Yeah. That would be you. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
matter? Is there something wrong? I don't see that. Mr. Barclay. Couldn't be just by where you're going. Are you from Grandpa? Don't you like it here? No, I do. I don't want to leave, but I have to. Why? I've never been awfully good to me. I like to see Barry much. It would kill me if I ever did anything that would hurt her. And then that's very fond of you, too. What are you going to see me while I felt? Well, I'm sure you can't help it. Well, Cliff, I'm ashamed of myself. Oh, cry, Nina. There's no reason for you to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, you serious, Cliff. Never does. Soon, how will bring Mr. Ramirez back? No, there's nothing to do that. 
You think a lot of Mr. Lanier. He's the finest man I've ever known. Goodbye, Bruce. Goodbye, Miss Gill. So long. Bye. for a couple of hours. Is all right, Bob? It's nothing serious. As soon as she wakes up, you come get me. You don't look too well, dear. I think I got some pills that'll help you. Take a couple of those every two hours, you'll sleep like a baby. <laughs> Someone has to take care of it. But it doesn't have to be you. Today is the first day that I'm your husband and you're my wife. I know. How do you know? Doc Opie gave us something to make us sleep. The minute she wakes up, she moves to somebody else's house. I hung up the place. Then I'll fix you some dinner. You hungry, dear? Yeah. I'm very hungry. Mm -hmm. Who can eat? <laughs> Doc Opie said to let him know the name she was not. Doc, he's got to stay someplace else. 